up, guys? Good morning, Wallace Nation. <laughs> we'll come back for another video. We're back at it again. All right, so today, what are we doing? Wallace and popular opinions. We both independent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she ended up doing it or not. Listen, I'm, I found a whole bunch. I've got a bunch of screenshots. We'll be sharing some other people's. Yeah, I wrote reacting. a few of my own. Sharing a few of our own. Mm -hmm. Sit back, relax, have fun. <laughs> Let us know if you agree, disagree, <laughs> if you disagree. And treat people with kindness. Treat people with kindness. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Let's just preface this by saying Romo was never our favorite. So just go into this video with that knowledge already in your head so you're not let down or bamboozled. You but don't click off the video. Don't click off the video. No, we're <laughs> here for you though. I'm Full <laughs> is not even close to being one of Wallow's best songs. <laughs> Opinions can't be wrong, but that's wrong. <laughs> I don't know if I... I feel like I agree. I mean, not even close is not the verbiage I would use personally. But I mean, if we're looking at our Wallows ranking, which I don't even know if I have on here. Like, I'm Full is not in the top 10 or 15. So I feel like by saying that, I'm Full is not one of Wallows' best songs. I'm Full is my number 10 spot. My number 10 seed. <laughs> I don't know. I just love the buildup of that song. And this song live. And the like chaos of it. The production is really good. Yeah. I just, I love the sound of the song. I will die for this song. I think Spring is the best thing that they've ever released. No, I disagree. I disagree too. Nothing Happens, I think, for sure, to me, is the best thing they put out. I think Nothing Happens has like a wider variety of sounds than Spring. I think the lyrics are a little more mature. I don't know, I love pictures of girls these days, but they kind of do the same thing the whole song, you know? We're not. She getting... didn't speak on It's Only Right and Ground for a reason. Exactly. There... But as we're talking about a comprehensive whole piece, I think Nothing Happens is better. Nothing Happens does, it flows. Uncomfortable is one of Walla's best songs. For me, I'm going to say again, disagree. I love Uncomfortable, especially last night we were talking about the Levi's arrangements. However, like I said, for I'm Full, like in the grand scheme of like me ranking the songs, it ranks pretty low for me personally, so I just agree. I love that song. <laughs> I really do love that song, but they do have better songs. Kind of long. I think she's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about her, but she's not the best of what they have. Yeah, I was gonna say she's not like special. She's special. She is special. But she's she's not Suntan. She's not. <laughs> she. I don't think she's of their best. None of their songs are inherently bad. Except, actually, we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, unpopular opinion. 1980s horror film one is so much better than two. Disagree. I love 1980s too. I think that's wrong too. I just love that 80s Edges out a little bit. synth pop. I just think that's exactly what that song needed. Do you remember when they were saying something about how they had a Worlds Apart 2? That was the same sound, like 80s synth pop. Yes. Where is that? Where is that? I feel like they don't surprise us with anything anymore. They don't like this. Like we would just wake up sometimes in high school and there'd just be a new music video. Mm -hmm. Or just like- be like, oh by the way, yeah. just dropping in noon. <laughs> or like 1980s, that was so random. Yeah. We were always in our econ class. Always in our econ class. Music videos, always in our econ class. All right, this is older, but somebody said, I did not like Especially You. I don't like the new Wallow sound at all. They need to go back to the Nothing Happened sound. It was way better. I think Especially You is like, <laughs> well, actually, I think Remote's a better example of a different sound. However, if we're picking from Tell Me That It's Over, I do think Especially You would probably be the example I would use. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you can grow as an, art, like, as an artist. artist or a group if you don't do different sounds. So I don't think that they should necessar necessarily go back to it. I do like more of like when you can hear the drums and the guitar. Yeah. Like I like being able to hear the instrument, whereas like remote is not giving that. Wallows is only respected because they have an actor in the band. Wrong! I mean, wh where do you even get that? That's so gross. What other band is that the case for? Um, like like I feel Finn like Wolfhards, someone could probably say that for. Or like Joe, like D-J-O with Joe Keery. Yeah. That's his last name, right? Yeah, Joe Keery. Okay. Like, I think like they're saying like that's the reason why they're so popular or why they started to get so popular. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I watched the Pictures of Girls music video because I 
loved 13 Reasons or I loved Clay <laughs> from 13 That's Reasons. That's like my next unpopular opinion. <laughs> I was like, oh my oh. god, that guy's from 13 Reasons Why. Let me just watch this I music can video confirm. really quick. And so then I was like, Clay Jensen. oh my god, it's so good. And that's how we found Wallace. I'm not going to act like, you know, that's not how we found them. But it's not the reason I kept listening. And let me be clear, we're not those people who were like, oh my god, it's Clay Jensen. Yeah, I think I have one in there that was like 13 Reasons Why fans are like all of what's wrong with Wallow's Nation. And back to your point that like, they're popular because of Dylan. I don't think that's true either because I feel like Are You Bored Yet went crazy on TikTok and I feel like that true. grew their audience a lot. And okay. Okay, they go. Like that just, I feel like doubled their audience. Tell me that's over, cleared, nothing happens. I don't even want to discuss this, that's wrong. <laughs> Moving forward. <laughs> Remote isn't as bad as people think it is and it was severely overheated. I think it was overhated to a degree. Judging comments in my last couple videos, I think it was accurately hated. <laughs> I just feel like a lot of people in the comments, which it's like, your, what you go. it's your opinion if you like remote, like whatever. However, being a Willows fan and going from the nothing happens sound, not hearing anything, not a peep. It's like a, and then playing remote. <laughs> Let's just play the first song on remote, shall we? <laughs> this being the first thing you <laughs> click on. Tell me that's not whiplash. Okay, and also like nobody gets me like you. No, I don't like that one. I think that's fun. It's this one. So good. I love talking about that too. Coastlines, it's long. It's the same sound. Wish me luck, it's long. It's the same sound. Talk like that, you gotta learn to love her. But once you love no, her. No, I loved her from the very beginning. You love her. Me, I had to learn to love her. I think it probably got a lot of hate. I don't think fans respond well to when artists do big sound changes. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I feel like it was accurately hated. I feel like it brought in new people, which is a good thing. That was a big experimentation. It wasn't like a little departure from their sound. It was a pretty big one. Like being so guitar and drums heavy to go, like this is completely electronic. There's no... This is good though. It is good, but I'm just saying it's very different. It is good different. in a different way. I'm okay. trying to be extra nice for most of y'all like me. Are You Bored Yet is actually not a bad song, just overplayed. I agree. I agree. I think it's a very, very good song. And I think the only reason I stopped listening to it was because everywhere. And it was just like tiring. But sometimes I can go back to it and I hear the little like piano, the little twinkles. And I'm like, aww. I just remember like when this first came out. And Clara. Oh my god, that was so exciting. It was so big, like so exciting. I love her. Like... This was our introduction to the Nothing Happens era, and I like would not have it any other way. I don't think they could have picked a better single. Like this was a gateway drug. It is, it, it's a great song. Yeah, I do. I think wouldn't it, change anything about this song. Absolutely suffers from being overplayed because I feel like uh, like if they were playing anywhere, doing any interview, like this is what they played, what they talked about, like before the interview would start, they would put this in the background. I tread lightly here, but like locals. I feel like been a large part of why the song is overplayed. They should have done meet and greets this past tour. Honestly, it's cool to meet them. But it's also like, obviously, it's hard to not have an awkward interaction. Like, I feel like you kind of have to go into it with the expectation that's kind of going to be awkward. There's only so much you can say in 20 say seconds, 15 in 15 seconds. 15 seconds when it's really just high and you're taking a picture. And I honestly feel like I enjoyed our VIP experience more at our show without a meet and greet because it did not mess up where we were in line. Oh, true. That one, they kind of like, for our show, like everyone sat down like in their rows. They got like their posters, their camera, merch if they wanted to get merch early. And they sat down in like did the acoustic rows, session. Oh, did yeah. their acoustic session. And then they like had people get up from those rows, even though it wasn't the order that we were lined up in outside. Yeah, so like we were probably like number 20 in line because mm -hmm. we were standing in the very cold weather. We ended up being like the last and row we, to get up. Yeah, we kind of wanted to be in the center. So they had like called a couple rows from the front and like people would go up on the side so they had ended up being in the front and then they would call a couple rows from the back and we were like pretty much smack down the middle. And we were toward the very end of the line for the meet and greet. And so once you meet and greet, then you're in line for the actual show. I feel like- I feel like they, I want the acoustic session to come back. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I don't think they should have done meet and greets, especially with like sicknesses that have been going around. 
Yeah. I think they're also just kind of like falling out of fashion. No one's really doing them. Yeah. But the acoustic session and like a Q and A, it's personal. It's interactive. You're very close to them because yeah. really there's only enough VIP to fill up like the first like three to five rows, yeah. which is very close. But even if they were on the stage, you're still very close to them. So like I feel like I can I could do without the meet and greets, and it makes sense with the pandemic and everything. Like getting sick can make a tour screech to a halt. So acoustic set enthusiast though. <laughs> World's Apart is my least favorite song, and I don't want to ever listen to it. <laughs> that hurts. I love World's Apart. I love World's Apart. I mean, but when, she's a skip sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's just not the vibe. But when you have songs like sometimes she's long, virtual aerobics. All right, next time. <laughs> yeah, true. I would pick Worlds Apart hands down. Like the lyricism in Worlds Apart is some of my favorite from Nothing Happens. Underneath the Streetlights is one of their best songs. I feel like Underneath the Streetlights in High School Pool is one of the best tour experiences. Yeah. Underneath the Streetlights, it was kind of jarring. I remember the first time like we ever heard it. Like we were talking Again. about like with remote and the sound of that just being shockingly so different. different. And it's so short and just like sporadic, like out of nowhere. I would kill if they would record it with. Oh. That in the middle, like be able to listen to that like whenever I wanted to. It would be so cool. Wallow's remixes are usually misses. That's my own unpopular opinion. Sorry, but yes. I know a lot of people like the OK remix with Remy Wolf, but I think I listened to it one time and I just like, let's play it, we'll play it yeah. for justice. Like immediately very different than what we're used I to. I like this intro though. I think one thing I will never get behind is like, auto-tune to that extent i think if they like redid it and they kept the vocals like that and they threw like a verse in from what remy wolf like great good i hate but vocal editing. i cannot stand the sound of that like and this sped up like of it That's like fine. Yeah, but I have to say, like, I feel like when we're talking about like like a Doja Cat song, like remix with Nicki Minaj, right? Does <laughs> Yeah. Like it's still very much say so. Like you could still yeah. hear it in that, whereas this nearly sounds like a completely different song. Like you just put me in that section, I would have no idea that it was okay. That's a fantastic comparison, actually. We need to listen to that on the drive by call. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miss for us, sorry. Yeah. Hurts me is underrated. I don't think anyone talks about that song. No one talks about that song, really and good. it's my favorite song. It was my favorite too when it first came out. Yeah. This is a really good example of like this new sound being done in a really good way. Because this is very like electronic. Yeah. But I think it was used better than it was in the mouth. I hate people who record for the entire show. Get your short video and put your phone down. I feel like if you're recording like the entire show and you're not having fun, it's really difficult for me at least to really truly be in the moment when I'm taking a video. Yeah. And like I will say for me, I've seen a lot of people like, you're never going to watch those concert videos back. I watch them. Yeah, well, those concert videos I do watch back and at I'm, least once a month. I'm just yeah. like, oh, let's just go watch. And do you? If anyone has a video <laughs> of the ice, the guitars at the end of high school pool where they're like, you know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but go ahead and send send a link or something because I've been searching forever. I'm like always texting her and I'm like, do you have this one part? Do you have the clip from this one part because like they do like different things when performing it live than they do like on the recording. Yeah. And I want to like look back and hear them, but yeah. you don't always know when they're coming. But I also am a big enthusiast of like putting your phone down and like jumping and screaming and like dancing. I don't mind the backdrop for this tour, but the Nothing Happens backdrop was genuinely otherworldly. And this one just doesn't have the same impact as the Nothing Happens one for me. I think the Nothing Happens one was like iconic. <clears throat> it was exactly what that era needed. This one, I get it though. Like, it looks like the cover. It looks nice. I feel like they've done cool effects with both, but I feel like they both match their tours. Yeah, I think it. I think well. it goes well for what they want to do. Drunk on Halloween is a waste of a fan pick. 
Was this your own personal? No, I didn't write that one. <laughs> um, Agree. As, it's a good song, yes. but live, there's, there's so, so many, many better, better picks. I would genuinely be upset. I was kind of like <laughs> upset it was on the set list when we saw them. Because there's so many other We've things We've heard I it before. Hear. It wasn't even the season. It's May. It's just not the vibe. And when you didn't play Suntan for me, what am I supposed to do when with that? When you didn't play Only Friend for me. I get. Like, that's some people's comfort song. But I feel like live, that one is very similar to what the song already is. Yeah. Whereas I feel like there's other songs that are different from how the song sounds. Can dance more. Can sing well, Yeah, or louder. it's like way more intense, li more lively. It just doesn't add anything extra for me. At the end of the day is overrated. Whoever submitted that, comment your address <laughs> and your home telephone number. I think it's one of the most beautiful songs. The production, amazing. Lyricism, amazing. The sound, everything, everything. I wouldn't change Top anything about that song. Tier, yeah. Maybe I'd add more twinkles. I love twinkles. <laughs> I love a good twinkle. Someone said, it's fun, but them changing their set list every night gives me anxiety. I cannot do it. Them changing the set list is one of my favorite parts of them touring. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like I would be way less excited, way I less inclined to keep go, seeing yeah. them if it was the same every time. Like, it gives them the ability to like mess around. The fan pick, I think, is such a fun perk. I think that's a really fun perk, too. <laughs> we were hoping for them to play some of their covers, because <gasps> they would do that back oh in the day. Oh my god. They would do some covers, and we had heard this charming man, right? No, we it was Blister in the here. Sun. We, we were heard hoping Blister to hear in the Sun, and we heard Boys Don't Cry. Mm -hmm. And we really want to hear this charming this man. Charming man. I love that song. She loves that song. So good. The cover is so good. The very next show, they played this charming man. They played and then all they three played, covers. They wait. They played all three. It was like, didn't they play What Makes You Beautiful too? Yes, and it was like their encore, which is typically two songs, was they played like, like five, five or six songs, and it was like several covers, a couple more of their own songs. The way we were gonna go to that show too. I stopped listening to them for a while because I was mad. Them. <laughs> Missing Out is the worst song and Tell Me That It's Over. No, it's Permanent Price. Yeah. Or Especially You. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Hot take, but I skipped ground. She put that in there on purpose. Like Satan wrote that. Like that's I mean, like, talk about a coming of age song. That's it. I don't ever want to go. Living in a memory, nothing to show. What? Who wrote that? God. She God wrote that. <laughs> God wrote that. She wrote it. She wrote that for sure. His part. Okay. Here's one of mine that I wrote down. They show a lot less personality on social media. They probably got like new management or something. I feel like it's almost a 180 from what it used it's to be. It's way less interaction. Let me set content. the stage for you. Like, if nothing happens on boxing video, watch that video and come back. <laughs> Did they put anything out like that? Oh my god, it's so funny. Like videos like that, those unboxing videos, or they would just post up on their they stories. They would never do something like that now. Or like, after our show, Brayden went live for like an hour and a half. Brayden yeah. is so goofy. <laughs> that man is quirky. He's an Aquarius. Yeah. He's quirky. <laughs> I feel like without tour videos, like I feel like a lot of fans would not know that. Mm -mm. Like you don't really see it anywhere. But another one of mine, It's Only Right is the best song on spring. Better Than Ground? Yeah. For now. <laughs> for now. Catch me. In two hours, ask me. All right, last one of mine. Screaming at them during tour, like during breaks especially, is very cringy. Oh my God. People, that's how you ruin a show. That like, Add secondhand embarrassment. A little anecdote on that. People bring signs. We're not talking about signs right now. That's so cringy and weird and like, Dehumanizing for them, or like people who put shout sexual something things in their signs. Exactly, something inappropriate or something like, what is wrong with you? So ick. It's not funny. Actually, they're not gonna laugh. No, they're not gonna inter like give interact it to that with at you. All. Be nice. Be respectful. <clears throat> Treat people with kindness. Treat people with kindness. Signs in general. I just feel like there's nothing important enough that you need to say <laughs> that needs to be on a sign. No. I'm sorry. Be a good person. Don't be a freaky weirdo. We're gonna rattle Can a few off really oh, quick. Yeah. Uncomfortable is their best single of the four. No. Not when pleaser. 
<laughs> it feels weird. Not when Pluto exists. Not when Sun Not when Sun exists. Not when Black Lives Matter exists. Um, I'm Paul's the best song on Nothing Happens. No, not, not when Only Friend exists. exists. Not when Remember When exists. No, <laughs> Do Not Wait exists. Not when Treacherous Doctor exists. Only skips from Wallows are on remote. No, I skip Permanent Price. I was gonna say Permanent Price. I feel like since we saw Especially You Live, I listened to it, but before then, I was basically like, don't even play this for me. What You Like is one of the best songs on Nothing Happens. What You Like? Yeah. I would agree with that. I love that song. That song is aged beautifully for me. Remote and Underneath the Streetlights are their best projects. That one's gotta be a joke. <laughs> that's exactly like, what that's I thought. Not, like, that's like, you're just saying joke. that to upset somebody. Yeah. I don't like I Don't Wanna Talk. I do love The Bridge. That's your opinion, that's your opinion, but that's You're always wrong. good. <laughs> You're wrong! Keep going! I'm just kidding. <laughs> I get it. I didn't like Marvelous so much either. You gotta give her a chance. I loved it from the first time I ever met her. You gotta her. learn to love her. Scrawny is the best song and nothing happens. No. <laughs> Tell me that's over is their best era. Or not today. No. They're both good songs, but only friend and what you like are skips. I'm sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> I just blacked out what I think I thought you said. Quarterback is their only bad song, and it's not Cole's fault, it's the story of it. The story? <laughs> That's why they don't like it? The story? Not like the sound or anything? Can we talk about that Twitter video of that random sound bite they put out? <laughs> it means that was right! This is my favorite video for so long. We're gonna take you, Cheryl. Oh my god, I love that video. I miss his blue hair more than I thought I did. He looked good. He looked really good. This altered the course of the earth. All right, last one. Nothing Happens is a better album overall than Tell Me That It's Over. Tell Me That It's Over has some highlights, but have the songs feel meh, especially when compared to Nothing Happens. I'm glad they're experimenting with different sounds, but Tell Me That It's Over as a whole body of work just feels disconnected and doesn't flow as well as Nothing Happens. I agree. I don't feel like half the songs are meh, but I would say that Nothing Happens is definitely more sonically cohesive. Yeah. I don't know what else to add, like, yeah. Okay, guys, that's gonna do it today. Remember when we made a prediction that we would have a song by fall? I made that prediction. I will not say we. I made that prediction. I think we'll have a new song by June. <laughs> they like to put stuff out in March though. In June. Dude, the and... spring. Like, can you just do something different? <laughs> <laughs> it's been real. Thanks for coming on this journey with us. Any last anecdotes you want to leave them with? Dream only friend. <laughs> Alright. It's been real, guys. Thanks Bye. for tuning in. Bye!